you can't say that sleep token sucks. I mean, that's just that's just a dumb thing to say. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we're here to talk about none other than Sleep Token. After grinding it out in the underground in relative obscurity, they exploded this year after going viral on TikTok, going from a few hundred thousand to almost three million monthly listeners on Spotify, and selling out arenas just a few years after I saw them opening for issues in Polyphia, playing to maybe 75 or 100 people. And if you're not familiar, they're best known for combining straight up pop like this with parts that honestly wouldn't be out of place in a Meshuggah song. And it's not just their music. The band is totally anonymous, only seen in costumes that look more like a religious cult than a metal band, which according to their lore is exactly what they are. A mouthpiece for a dark goddess named Sleep, with the singer of the band just being a vessel for that god's will. But what exactly made them blow up like they did? How did this anonymous band from England become one of the leading forces in modern metal seemingly overnight? Those are the questions that I will answer in this video. And also this video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. I've had my Helix mattress now for I think 10 or 11 months. And honestly, I absolutely love it. It is so, so much more comfortable than the one we had before. Everybody's different and Helix knows that. And so they made their sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. And if you sleep with a partner, you can take the sleep quiz together and find something that's a perfect compromise for both of you. For example, based on our results, Helix matched us with with their Dusk Lux mattress. My wife and I are both side sleepers who like kind of a medium firmness. And so this is perfect for us and we both sleep way, way better. Honestly, I love this thing. And with your Helix Sleep Mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. There are also financing options and flexible payment plans. Helix delivers the mattress right to your door for free within the US. And it comes rolled up in this box that's super easy to set up yourself. I love my Helix mattress and I think you will too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash punk rock to get 25% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Sleep Token was formed in London back in 2016 by an anonymous collective. And in September of the same year, they released their first single, Thread the Needle. After that, they released a few more songs across 2016 and 2017 and two EPs. And they did get a little traction in sort of the underground metalcore scene, but nothing that really broke out beyond that. The first time that they really got some traction was when they released their song Jaws in 2018. And this is also a good place to talk about the whole concept behind the band. Sleep Token is essentially a cult that worships a goddess named Sleep. The front man goes by the name of Vessel because the goddess Sleep acts through him. He is just a vessel for her will. And their whole mission statement is essentially spreading the gospel of the goddess Sleep around the world. It's certainly an interesting gimmick, and I can't say that I can think of any bands that have done anything similar, but I'll get into the lore and the gimmick and all of that later in the video. But you can certainly see how much they thought through this concept and how well developed it is when you watch the video for Thread the Needle. Essentially, the whole video looks like some sort of summoning ritual, which is interpreted as Vessel, the singer of the band, being born or kind of reincarnated in this form. And if you're already into the lore aspect of Sleep Token, I recommend that you check this video out because it gives a great perspective on how much they've thought this whole thing through. And after Jaws, they released two more singles, one of which being their rendition of Hey Ya by Outkast, which is pretty random. I can't say I saw that one coming, but it actually kind of works. And honestly, if you didn't know better, you'd probably think it was a Sleep Token original. Hey 
But their first real breakthrough came in 2019 when they signed with Spine Farm Records and released their first full-length album, Sundowning. And off of that album, it got them to the very respectable level of around 150,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, which is great for a band that young, but obviously nothing like what they're doing now. And a big part of what gave them that initial boost is how they approached the marketing for the album. Typically what you see bands do is release three to five singles to build up anticipation before eventually releasing the whole album to capitalize on all that, but they did things a bit differently. Instead, they released every song on the album as a single, which kind of consistently increased the hype and anticipation as the album got closer to coming out, with the final single coming out the day that the album was released. And sonically, I think this is where Sleep Token as we know them really got started. Their first few singles were certainly good, but this is where you really started to hear their sound come together. The songs got catchier, the poppy parts were more poppy, the heavy parts were heavier, Vessel got a lot better as a vocalist. It was all around just a massive step up from their previous material. And this is around when I saw them on that tour with Issues, Lil' Aaron, and Polyphia. They were the first band on the bill. And like I said, there were probably maybe 50 to 100 people watching them. Kind of crazy in hindsight. And after that, they continued to do a little bit more touring, most of which got canceled because of the pandemic, and released a collection of piano renditions of their own songs, and some from other artists called The Room Below. The highlight of that definitely being the piano version of their song Bloodsport, which a lot of people consider to be even more hard-hitting than the original. And the heavens just won't open up for me. And after that, it was time for the next album cycle. And in 2021, they released This Place Will Become Your Tomb. Ooh, let's talk about chemistry, cause I'm dying somehow. And this was easily their biggest release to date, capitalizing on the underground following that they had been building one show and one single at a time for the past several years, getting them to their first ever chart positions, coming in at a respectable number 39 in the UK and number 13 in Scotland. And sonically, it was a little bit different than Sundowning. It certainly still had some heavy parts, but overall it was more kind of moody and mellow. And the album as a whole was more of what I guess you could call like an experience compared to Sundowning, where it seemed like they focused more on creating an album that had this cohesive front to back kind of experience as compared to each song standing on its own as a single like they did with Sundowning. And because of that, there were people who said that some of these songs felt like filler, despite the album having a lot of fan favorites like Alkaline and Hypnosis. But then on the other hand, there were also a lot of people saying this is the best thing they had done to date. And so it may have been a little bit divisive, but overall it was clearly a success for the band. And if this is the biggest that they ever got, I would say that was still pretty impressive for a band that's sort of as unorthodox as they are. But as a lot of you know, the real breakthrough was about to come. A little over a year after This Place Will Become Your Tomb, they started releasing new singles for the next album cycle. And to the surprise of absolutely everybody, or at least to me, their second single called The Summoning absolutely blew up on TikTok. And the song has a very catchy chorus and a lot of cool heavy parts, which on its own is great. But the reason it blew up is this part right here. Did I mistake you for a sign from God? It came after this really long break in the song that lasted over a minute. And everyone was expecting this like nasty, heavy breakdown to come after that. But instead we get this like seductive jazzy part. And this is the part of the song that was featured in one TikTok after the other. People just could not get enough of it. And this is what made the band truly skyrocket, which I don't think the fans or even the band themselves expected to happen so quickly. I remember people were DMing me saying like, oh, did you see Sleep Token as viral on TikTok? And I was like, Sleep Token? Really? Because they were always kind of the last band that I would expect to go viral. But that is exactly what happened. They went from a consistent two to 300,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, which is respectable, but you know, nothing amazing, to shooting past the two and a half million mark almost overnight. 
And what you see in a lot of cases like this, where an artist goes viral on TikTok for one specific part of a song, oftentimes what you see is that people just know them for that one part and ignore the entire rest of their catalog. And so you're kind of asking, what is that viral success really even worth if it doesn't translate into any kind of long-term fans or people who will come to your shows? And to be honest, that's what I expected to happen with Sleep Token as well. But I'm happy to say that in this case, I was completely wrong. Their popularity on TikTok clearly translated into real, true, long-term fans that are genuinely, absolutely passionate about this band. And so as much as I thought they might be kind of a metalcore one-hit wonder, that was definitely not the case. Similar to how TikTok took Bad Omen's career to a new level not long before that. And after the summoning blew up, they took full advantage of that momentum, releasing more and more singles, which of course culminated in the release of their third album, Take Me Back to Eden. And in my opinion, this is easily the best thing they've ever done, combining the best of both worlds from their first two albums, while introducing a bunch of new elements to their sound, specifically some black metal elements, which work surprisingly well for their sound. And another thing that they did, which I think made people fall even more in love with them, is to lean more into the lore aspect of the band within the music itself. Some songs have callbacks to their previous material. For example, the title track, which calls back to the first song on the album, Chokehold. Like branches Another great example would be the final song on the album called Euclid, which calls back to the first song on Sundowning, The Night Does Not Belong to God, which is a really great way of kind of putting a bow on this trilogy of albums. A lot of fans think of Take Me Back to Eden as kind of the conclusion to the album, while Euclid is the conclusion of the trilogy. And the release of this album is the first time that a new album from a band in, I guess what I'll call the metalcore scene, really felt like an event. It seemed like the entire metal world and even a lot of people outside of it was talking about Sleep Token and kind of eagerly anticipating each new song that they rolled out and the album itself. All the YouTube reactors were creating just a ton of hype out of every new song. It really felt like there was something big happening. And one thing that I found particularly interesting is how many women were getting into Sleep Token around that time, which I found pretty refreshing considering that for maybe the past decade or so before that, metal had become kind of a sausage fest. And that's never good for the health of any genre. For example, look at how popular metalcore and deathcore were in the late 2000s back when scene girls were a thing versus the 2010s when the audience for that stuff was primarily like Reddit guys with beards. One month in and I'm trying to find every single And so seeing that many women get into Sleep Token, as well as bands like Lorna Shore and Bad Omens, among others, is probably the best thing that's happened to the scene in years. And that leaves us with the final question of this video. Why did this band in particular become one of the leading bands in modern metal with this kind of absolutely diehard fanatical fan base while so many other bands in the genre are struggling? Well, I think there's a few things that go into that. For one, we need to talk about the whole mystery aspect of the band. To this day, their identities remain anonymous. There's tons of speculation about who they may be, but the only thing we know for sure is that they're based out of London. And although there's tons of theories floating around out there about who they might be, most of them about Vessel, and who knows, maybe we'll find out someday, but until then, we can only speculate. And this idea of mystery and lore and world building is something that's common with a lot of the biggest artists in metal. For example, if you look back to when Slipknot was blowing up, they were also anonymous and fans would speculate about their identities. Like you can go find all these old sites on GeoCities and Tripod and stuff with all these theories about who number four is or whatever. I love the fact that nobody really knows who they are. I love the fact mm -hmm. that, that they don't want to be known, you know? I mean, there are hints of early, early Slipknot there. And we saw the same thing a few years later with Ghost. And it was a huge story when their real identities were revealed as part of a lawsuit. And as far as lore and world building goes, Coheed and Cambria, I think, is another great example of how that creates this kind of diehard cult fan base that Sleep Token is quickly building as well. Which really, I think, just comes down to human nature. 
people love just kind of bonding over this activity of digging up the hidden details behind the lore of just about anything. Like back when Lost was on TV, people would have watch parties and speculate about what was going on on this island. And you see the same thing with Sleep Token, like this Reddit thread with thousands and thousands of words dissecting the lore behind the band. And when there's this level of detail to the lore behind a band, I think it makes it more than just the music. It's almost like a whole alternative universe to escape into. And if you get it and you understand all the details of the lore and you meet somebody else who does too, then you instantly have a bond because you're part of this small select group of people who gets it, which I think explains a lot about why people are so obsessive about their sleep token fandom. And of course, there's the music itself, which is a combination of kind of genty, downtuned metal and pop. A lot of people call them the metal version of Bastille, which I think honestly isn't wrong. And it's a good thing. And that contrast between pop and metal isn't necessarily new. For example, Issues was doing it 10 years ago, but Sleep Token definitely put their own spin on it. Whereas Issues was kind of like metalcore with boy band vocals, Sleep Token is more like if Meshuggah decided to have radio-friendly pop parts. And this highlights, I think, a bigger trend within metal itself, which is that right now bands are embracing kind of both sides of those extremes. They have songs that are as heavy as it gets, while at the same time having songs that realistically Realistically, could be played on the radio next to Olivia Rodrigo or Taylor Swift. And so as somebody who appreciates extremes and art, I think this is cool to see because there's less of this middle point now where the songs are like kind of heavy, but not really, and somewhat radio friendly, but not quite exactly there, which just kind of leaves them in this no man's land of neither here nor there where nobody is satisfied. And I would say Sleep Token is one of the bands leading that trend, along with Bad Omens and Spirit Box and some really cool smaller artists like Unprocessed. But the appeal of Sleep Token is more than just the lore and the costumes and all that. Yes, they dress up as characters characters that wouldn't be out of place in a video game like Elden Ring. And yes, they have this whole thing where they look like a religious cult and that certainly does get them some attention. But there's plenty of other bands that have tried something like that in the past and they got nowhere. So why is it working so well for Sleep Token? A lot of people would say that the answer to that lies in their lyrics. Their songs are mostly about relationships, about love and heartbreak, things like that, that honestly aren't that common in metal, at least not with the specific kind of emotional tone that Sleep Token puts on it. But even then, it's not straightforward. They don't just beat you over the head with it because on the one hand, yes, you could take them as a song about a relationship, which is relatable to pretty much anybody on the planet. But on the other hand, if you're a metal fan that hates love songs, well, you could also interpret those lyrics as Vessel's worship of the goddess Sleep, which I think explains why a lot of the metal fans who normally wouldn't like that kind of lyrical content love Sleep Token. But another way you could look at it is that the lyrics genuinely are about relationships, and the whole goddess thing is just a metaphor and a way of coping with a breakup. And what's more relatable than a breakup? That and unrequited love are probably the most common themes for music, more so than anything else. Because we can all relate to that, right? And I think that angle probably does explain why a lot of people who normally wouldn't listen to metal at all, certainly not the kind of weird left of center progressive metal that Sleep Token plays, are so in love with this band. But the real point here is that there are so many different facets and angles to Sleep Token. All these kind of different layers just give people a reason to speculate and theorize and debate so much so that there are entire communities just dedicated to that aspect of the band alone. And that tells me that they have definitely done something right. They have built something that really truly means something to millions and millions of people. And I don't know what the next move will be for Sleep Token, but I do know that they have a bright future ahead of them if they keep up this momentum. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, I would like to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. Patrons get all my videos and podcasts early. I do Q and A's, I do giveaways. There are members only channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. And there is a way to have me review your music. So if any of that sounds cool, hit the link in the description of this video. And with that, I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you next time.